Uh, good afternoon there. Yay, and good hello. Evening. It's 10.49 p.m. here in Manila. <laughs> so uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, before I proceed, uh, may I present to you my four major primary sources for this paper. Uh, these are actually uh, documents, thick, uh, thick documents from the Archivo General de Indias, and I access them via Paris. So the first, uh, the, the first doc document is about the fall of Manila and the transfer to Bulacan, a province north of Manila. And then the second, I, the second source is about and the reminiscences of Bulacan and Pampanga, the two provinces that uh, welcomed him or hosted him after the fall of Manila. And then the third one is about the, it's all about the prohibition to enter Pampanga by non-residents. And the last one is about the activities of Anda in Pampanga and Bulacan. Uh, immediately north of Manila are the provinces of Bulacan and Pampanga. These are connected to Metro Manila via the North Luzon Expressway and the MacArthur Highway. But during the British invasion of Manila and Cavite from 1762 to 1764, these provinces were accessible not via land, but via sea through Manila Bay and the thousands of rivers and creeks comprising the vastness of the Pampanga River Basin. At that time, the British controlled Manila and Cavite, the capital of Bulacan province was the town of Bulacan, where the name of the province was derived. The town was special to the Spaniards because when they established their seat of government in Manila in 1571, the powers of the Ayuntamiento or the city government of Manila were extended up to the town of Bulacan. But one must note that this, is, that, that this did not mean Bulacan town was under Manila. As the seat of the, of the provincial capital, the Bulacan town had its own Spanish administrator called Alcalde Mayor or equivalent to the present day governor of a province. Nonetheless, the idea of extending the powers of Manila across the Bulacan town via Manila Bay could have been derived from the fact that in pre-colonial times, Bulacan town was an extension of the territory of Lacandula, the Raja of Tondo, the kingdom immediately north of Manila, and its inhabitants were mostly descended from the said Raja. Moreover, the capital of Pampanga, the next province from Bulacan, was located in the town of Bacolor during the British invasion. These two provinces and two capital towns mattered during the British invasion. We often read in various books and studies how our, our ancestors in these provinces protected and harbored Simon de Anda y Salazar, the sole official of the Spanish government in the Philippines and captured by the British. The writings are replete with episodes of how they, they mustered forces to fight the British and the Chinese allies. But there, were, there was more to soldiering and being just a home to Anda. Before we proceed, please take note that despite being neighbors, the two provinces are home to two different ethnic groups speaking different languages each. The people of Bulacan belong to the ethnic group called the Tagalogs, while those of Pampanga are called Kapampangans, or in the Spanish records, they, they are referred to as the Pampangos. And in the Dutch records, they, were, they, were, they are referred to as the Papangers. Despite this multiculturalism, the two ethnolinguistic ethno groups were somehow united because of the ruling families here were related. In fact, when the Spaniards began conquering Manila in 1571, the Kapampangans of Makabebe, now a town in Pampanga, and the Tagalogs of Pagonoy, now a town of Bulacan, were the first natives to resist the Spanish invasion. But this sentiment was not shared by the entire clan because their relatives ruling Manila and its nearby kingdom of Tondo supported the Spaniards. One of them was Lacandula, the Tagalog ruler of the ancient kingdom of Tondo, now part of the city of Manila. Quite surprising, a son and two nephews of Lacandula joined the resistance to the Spanish invasion 
However, those who defied the Spaniards were defeated in the Battle of Bangkosai in Manila Bay on June 3, 1571. 21 days later, the Spanish government was established in Manila. The ancient rulers who supported Spanish colonialism enjoyed privileges. Among these privileges was to remain rulers of the natives, which was seen as practical by the Spaniards. Each barangay or the pre-colonial village was ruled by an autocrat, autocratic ruler called Datu. Each Datu was influential to his constituents who were basically his or her relatives. In ancient Kapampangan society, the constituents of the Datu were called Kabangka, which literally means in Kapampangan society of the same boat. While barangay was a type of ancient sikra, the Spaniards introduced a new title for a Datu under the colonial setup. It was called the Cabeza de Barangay or the village chief. The ruling class were called Maginoo by the Tagalogs from the root word Ginoo or noble, and it was called Makya in Kapampangan, which is the cognate of, of the Kapampangan word Maya, meaning affluent or good. Like the ancient Datu, Cabeza de Barangay was an inherited position by the firstborn son. In the 17th century, the Spaniards gave the cabezas another political opportunity in the colonial bureaucracy. It was called the gobernadorcillo, now equivalent to the, to the municipal mayor. Although back then, there were two types of gobernadorcillos, a gobernadorcillo of the principalia and a gobernadorcillo of the Chinese. Principalia here was the term referred to the Maginoos or the ruling class. The Anda documents in the Archivo General de Indias abound with these terminologies. So uh, here are the list of, of rulers you know, or the cabezas in Pampangan Bulacan recorded in one of the documents in the AGI who supported Simon de Anda at the onset of his, uh, of his assumption as the Governor General of the Philippines. And notice that aside from the terms gobernadorcillo and cabeza, the list also includes the term capitan. Father Diego Bergano, the Augustinian lexicographer behind the Bocobolare de la Lengua Pampanga, published in 1732, explained that the term capitan was used by a cabeza de barangay during wartime. The idea can be both pre-colonial and colonial in nature. Father Bergano provided the indigenous Kapampangan equivalent for a wartime capitan. And the word is punsalang, from the word pun, which means head or leader, and salang means enemies. So basically, it means leader against the enemy. Whereas the idea of tapping the Principalia to be part of the Spanish army was instituted in 1602 when Governor General Pedro Bravo de Acuna requested the provinces, including Pampanga and Bulacan, to master their fellow constituents to join the cracking down of a large Chinese rebellion. The Principalia also produced the soldiers who joined the Spaniards against, the, against several revolts across the country. The Dutch attacks, the conquest and defense of Maluku in present-day Indonesia, and the annexation of the Marianas and Formosa, now Taiwan, to the Spanish Empire. Again, when the British invaded Manila in 1762, the Principalia gave Spain their utmost support. No wonder why Archbishop Manuel Antonio Rojo, then the temporary Spanish Governor General of the Philippines, and his war council sent Anda to Bulacan on October 3, 1762, to ensure the loyalty of the nearby provinces. Another official was sent south of Manila via Laguna province the Royal Treasurer, Don Francisco Leandro de Viana. But of these two, only Anda had the audacity to proclaim himself Governor General of the Spanish Philippines while in Bulacan on October 5, 1762. This was for the obvious reason that all high-ranking officials were held captives of the British inside Intramuros on that day. Because Bulacan, the capital town of Bulacan, was exposed to British attacks, Anda decided to transfer to Bacolor then the capital town of Pampanga, because it was located quite far from the sea. Many of us thought that because Anda moved to Bacolor, the town automatically became the capital of the Philippines. 
Various documents in the AGI show that Andal never regarded Bacolor as the capital of the Philippines, but as his residence instead. I myself also thought that Andal never left Bacolor since then. In fact, AGI documents reveal that he was frequently holding office in Bulacan town. There is also a document in the AGI dated December 24, 1762, in which Andal's address was in Mexico, a town north of Bacolor in Pampanga. The AGI documents also recorded how participative Andal's government in Bulacan and Pampanga was. And according to him, the people of Pampanga and Bulacan were broadly influential. With no one else to depend on except the few Spaniards who were officials and curates, and the one these people in these provinces, despite an apparent issue on them of them towards the Spaniards, he said, and I quote, the locals of Bulacan and Pampanga have had a long grudge against us, and that's a problem. And the, and the problem seems irreconcilable, according to Anda. And I don't quote. He even, he, he even formed an executive, an exclusive junta, which with the principalities of Bulacan and Pampanga, in a pilot on November 9, 1762. Aware of the cultural differences between the two provinces, he noted, and I quote, before going to our meeting place in a pilot, knowing the seating arrangements would be an issue. I persuaded the Pampangos to treat the Tagalogs as guests and to give them the seats of honors. There was a time Anda visited Bulacan town again to establish a joint junta general de guerra involving Bulacan and Pampanga principalias on November 3, 1762. During this meeting, Anda aired his sentiments that while he acknowledged the diversity of his tropas or troops, the jurisdictions of the provinces and their ethnolinguistic individualities by allowing them to choose the respective commanders, the two provinces must aspire, and I quote, unity and harmony, end of quote, and the avoidance of competition between them. To seal what transpired in Bulacan, all parties present signed the protocol. Moreover, traveling to Bacolor was imprudent, especially for the Bulacan towns of Polo now Valenzuela City, May Kawayan, and Obando, whose river systems are not connected with the Pampanga River Basin. The only way for these towns to reach Bacolor is via Manila Bay, and Anda had no navy to patrol the British-dominated Manila Bay. Here, a pallet, which is on your screen, is located here along the Pampanga River. A pallet became a very strategic place to meet the two provinces. Notice that he established the junta of the Principalia not in Bulacan nor in Bacolor, but in Apalit. Not with, notwithstanding its location just along the Pampanga River, yet not close to Manila Bay, Apalit was closer to most Bulacan towns. Much more the apparent disinterest of the Principalias of Bulacan to exert energies to proceed to Bacolor. In a pallet's neighboring town of Calumpit, the, the Angat River or Rio de Quingua back then connects with the Pampanga River. If you notice this, another blue line, this is the Angat River now or the Rio de Quingua, which connects with Pampanga River in the, in the town of Papalit. The Rio de Quingua passes by the towns of Baliwag and Quingua while Hacienda de Benavista, Malolos, Iginto, and Bigaa, all parts of Bulacan, have streams connected to them. Bulacan Town and Pompong have streams connected to the rivers of Malolos, while Hagonoy is along the Pampanga River. With a pallet as, as the meeting point, the principalias of Polo, Mekawayan, and Obando could have passed via Bulacan and Malolos. The complexity of the river thoroughfares north of Manila Bay could be the reason why the principalias from these towns signed late in the junta on November 9, 1762. Furthermore, the principalias of, of Upper Pampanga, which would later be called the province of Nueva Ecija, joined Andas Junta only on January 16, 1763, due to distance. Once again, Anda was more accessible to these towns of Pampanga via a pallet 
because the said region was along the Pampanga River. Among, among the products of Anda's endeavor to unite the people of Pampanga and Bulacan during the British invasion was the assistance extended by the Kapampangan volunteers in recapturing the Bulacan towns of Bulacan and Malolos from the British in 1763. He claimed that, and I quote, a close friendship, end of quote, between the two provinces flourish after the event. There could be truth in this observation of Anda because the competition between Pampanga and Bulacan remains up until today, and the latter does not acknowledge the superiority of the former. The establishment of the Junta of the Principalia in Apalit was unprecedented in Philippine history, colonial history. It appraised the importance of the native leaders in acknowledging Anda's governorship and captainship of the Philippines. The AGI document on the establishment of the Junta listed down the commitments of the Principalia. And these, are, these were, number one, affirmation of their loyalty to Spain. Number two, the acknowledgement that the British were enemies of the Roman Catholic Church. Third, their, de their defense of the, Sp of the Spanish cause will remain until the last drop of their blood, end quote. And then meanwhile, Anda was not successful in uniting the two infantries of Pampanga and Bulacan, but at least on paper, he recognized them under one name. Regimientos, Reglados de Naturales de las Provincias de Pampanga y Bulacan. One regiment composed of the Kapampangans from Pampanga and the other of the Tagalogs from Bulacan with six companies each. With this development, ANDA created the Junta General de Guerra composed of Bulacan and Pampanga officials on November 30, 1762. So these, are the, these were the officials of the Junta General of Bulacan and Pampanga, and which which serve as the as Andas uh, for uh, no, uh, colonial force against the British. And to give you an idea how the how Anda subsidized the soldiers of Pampanga and Bulacan in consultation with the principalias, these were the subsidies given to the soldiers. And to show more how self-assured Anda was with the natives, Don Francisco Carrion, the governor of Mexico, a town in Pampanga, confidently raised a question that might cause his death. He pointed out in the junta the rule of succession in case something happened to Anda. Although audacious for a native to interfere at such, at such a level of colonial administration, Anda recognized the question as valid and necessary. At that moment, he recommended that a lieutenant governor would be in the, identified as his successor. But had licenciado Don Jose Ricardo de Villasenor, the fiscal attorney of the Bacolor Real Audiencia, reviewed the matter in consultation with the uncaptured bishops of Nueva Cáceres, now Naga City, and Nueva Segovia, now Vigan City, and the father provincials of the Agustinians, Recollects, Dominicans, and Franciscans in Intramuros. But there was an aspect of the colonial governance and uh, gave exclusively to the Spaniards only. And this was the Real Hacienda or the Real Royal Treasury. On November 20, 1762, and uh, established the Junta de Real Hacienda in Bacolor with, the, with these members. On December 28, 1762, the, the Alcaldes Alcalde Mayores of Bulacan, Pampanga, and Bataan prohibited the entry of anyone from Manila to avert imminent enemy infiltration. This was later supported by a bando or order of ANDA, which, was, which, was, which is written in Spanish Kapampangan and Tagalog, issued in Bacolor on February 12, 1764, suspending the food supply of Pampanga to Manila and prohibiting the people of the said provinces, including Laguna, to travel and transact to Manila, Cavite, and the suburbs unless approved by the Alcaldes Mayores, Gobernador Silios, and the Minister of Justice and the War. Anda had to do this to preserve the dominion of his Catholic king. The following, uh, uh, to monitor the movement of the people in every town in Pampanga and Bulacan, Anda implemented the passport policy in those provinces. Each passport was valid for six days only 
to prevent counterfeiting unless extended by the authorized officials. Guilty of this crime would be sentenced to life imprisonment, including the negligent sentinels of a town. But Anda was more worried about his fellow oidor or judge in the real audiencia, named Don Santiago de Orenda, in, known for his ineptitude, treachery, and deception, because he invited some members of the Principalia from Bulacan and from Pampanga to meet with three British officials in Intramuros in January 1763. Thus, Anda reconvened his Junta de Guerra in Apalit on January 16, 1763, but with expanded membership for some sort of loyalty check. These are the this is the list of the expanded membership of the Principalias of Bulacan and Pampanga. And they had the vehement assumption that the said British meeting was about to attack on Pampanga, was about the attack on Pampanga. For him, the involvement of the Kapampangan in the meeting was an attempt to divide the province by destroying the unity of the Kapampangan people and their acknowledgement of the Catholic King of Spain. He knew very well Orendain, who could have persuaded the Kapampangans with the latter's mastery of deception, but his faith in the Kapampangan was so strong. In the said junta meeting, he reminded the Kapampangan leaders of their, and, and, uh, and, and I quote, unstained and no blood of indifference, age old loyalty and honor to Spain, end of quote. And this agony was reflected in the composition of his junta compared to the previous ones. It involved not only the capitanes of the, of the Principalia, but also the gobernadorcillos and, and as much as possible, all the principal, principal members up to the farthest from Panga towns of Gapan, now part of Meba Ecija. A protocol was signed by all the attendees pledging their utmost support for Spain, the king and the Catholicism, and that whosoever found guilty of treachery, he be a principal or a, or a timawa or a plebia or an ordinary people, would be sentenced to capital punishment according to the law with the addition that a principal would either face a consequence of banishment or execution by the sword and death by drowning if a timawa or a freeman or a, an, an, an injo natural would be found guilty. A principal, a, a member of the principal class would be also dispossessed of being principal, including his direct lineage assets would be confiscated and his entire family would be expelled out of Pampanga. The junta also adopted the recommendation of humiliating a traitor on the street to serve as an example among the Kapampangans. Meanwhile, in his post-British invasion report dated August 29, 1764, Anda revealed that he became more anxious about the presence of the Chinese in almost all the major river toriffers in Bulacan and Pampanga. In fact, he already suspected the meeting of the British in Orendain's house to be about the British-Chinese alliance. And to sum up, writing from Bacolor in August 1764, Anda reported to King Charles III the summary of, of what transpired from 1762 to 1764 in Bulacan and Pampanga. He said, the natives were able to maintain the Philippines intact despite the undeniable powerful enemy, the British. With their support, the British were locked up only in Manila and Cavite, but Anda was realistic. His bastion, Bulacan and Pampanga, could be destroyed instantly by the British if not of what he interpreted as a divine inter intervention to preserve Catholicism. Catholicism. Anda never left the territories immediately north of Manila Bay, especially Pampanga and Bulacan, out of fear of his life. Just north of Pampanga were the secessionist forces of Pangasinan and Ilocos under Diego Silang. While Anda's participative governance was in a way a show off of force and command to the Spanish and British authorities in Manila, it was his own way of winning the natives to his side, especially the Kapampangans. And as effort to expand the membership of his government, especially in the Junta de Guerra, empowered the natives, although through the principal, principal class. He even addressed the disparate locations of the towns by making himself available in a palette and championed unity among his, 
among his two ally ethnic groups. Thank you. Uh, okay, I need to huh, change our, oh, there we are. <laughs>